Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. Whoop whoop. Happy Wednesday to each and every one of you. Glad y'all stopped by. Today we're doing an Easter themed quilt, obviously, right? Obviously. <laughs> we got eggs. It's also springy because we got pinwheels. I always think of spring being very windy. And who doesn't love putting pinwheels out and watching them spin? I don't know. That's just me. That's okay. <laughs> so this is kind of a, it's not kind of, it is a scrap busting uh, pattern. Okay. You, I encourage completely using scraps. So when I'm walking you through this, I will tell you the different measurements to get the pinwheels, to get the eggs, all the things that you need. Now I will tell you for this quilt, I used for the background, I used Tone on Tone White Blossoms by Christopher Thompson of Riley Blake Designs. That's my favorite go-to guys, one of them. I have a lot, but that's, that's one I use a lot. You hear it over and over. So that's the background. The printed fabric is Tula Pink Tiny Coordinates. Okay, it's a fat quarter bundle of 24 fat quarters. And they're just polka dots and stripes in various colors. So I did, it's scrappy, but I did have it a little controlled. And it made it a lot easier to utilize um a, you know, a designer who, a, an entire collection. It just made it really easy because all the, all of the different fabrics go together. So that made it so simple. And I, saying that you can do it with leftover 10 inch squares or maybe of a 10 inch square pack that you have. It, this is definitely layer cake friendly. Uh, you could so do this with a layer cake, um, with the 10 inch squares, just so you know. I encourage the scrappy. Okay, the scrappier, the better. But if you're anything like me and you and you have something in your possession that you you just see spring, this this just may be the quilt for you. Okay. Five inch squares won't work. Definitely a, a layer cake will be would be good if you want to make it controlled or if you want a little help with coordinating colors that would definitely work. But you can also just simply dig inside of your stash or your scraps and get this done. So I'll walk you through all of the different measurements to get the different parts to include the background. Okay, but let's talk about what you might need. First and foremost, the background fabric that, you know, I used one background. Okay, that just kind of makes it more cohesive. And it takes a yard. We'll just go there. It's like 0.86 or something crazy. So it's a yard of fabric for the background. All the prints, I did say, I used Tula Pink. Um, it's uh, tiny coordinates. Tula Pink designed it for Free Spirit. Those are available in the shop if you're so interested. Super cute fabric, gotta love it. Uh, but that's what I used for all the prints. One yard of background and various different things for your printed fabric. As far as backing goes, this is going to finish at 30 and a half inches square. It's a wall hanging, the egg hunt, because we're going on an egg hunt. We're looking for eggs. So it finishes as a wall hanging at 30 and a half. Now you can always add to it and make it bigger. You can take away and make it smaller, but always know it'll take more fabric or less fabric when you do that. To get the 30 and a half inch wall hanging, it comes to um, one and an eighth yard for backing. Now, isn't that a strange number? Here's the story with that. That gives you four inches, basically one direction, because you'll have enough, well, 30 plus four, yeah, you'll have enough to go up and down, 
but to go lengthwise you need that um, yard and an eighth for four inches of overage if you don't need four inches then it becomes you know whatever it is that you want to do uh, I might I might cut a yard and and work with that uh, that's 36 inches for a yard this is 30 and a half so what's going to happen is it gives me about two and a half inches on each side I haven't decided yet because that might be a nightmare <laughs> I am going to load it on a long arm. So that just might be a nightmare. But four inches overage, it comes to a yard and an eighth. For binding, you'll need a third of a yard. Okay. Now what I think I'm going to do when I bind this, I think I'm going to take the same line, the Tula Pink's tiny coordinates, and I'm going to do a scrappy binding, I think. That is that is yet to be seen, right? But I think that's what I'll do. Now that yard of fabric uh, that you'll need for your binding, that does include the extra 10 inches, plus um, it's at two and a half inches for the width of your strips. So if you use two and a quarter, you have, you know, you'll have to do the math. So it's a two and a half inch binding, takes you a third of a yard. Now you will also need a template for the eggs, okay? Yes, we are going to be doing applique. These eggs are applique. I w I'm not gonna ask you to do any curve piecing. <laughs> I've done curve piecing, and maybe one day we'll go there. But um, for now, I'm giving you a template. And I show you how to use it in my method. Now, just like always, I gave you a solid line, which is what the actual egg is. And then I gave you a dotted line. I'm trying to do this in the camera and it's not working. Um, I gave you a dotted line. And that dotted line from the solid line is a quarter inch. Okay, so whatever method that you use for applique, you can so do this. Okay, I just, I'm going to show you my method on how I did this, because for mine, um, it was a lot of fun, and it ain't hard, and the template just tells you how big to make it. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about this template during the live today, but you will need the template, and it is the, if you are watching today, I think it's the 15th of March of 2023. It is the first thing on the list on our website under list of inspirations or inspirations. I'll put the link for it down here. I promise this guys. I promise I'll make sure it's there. <laughs> it's always in the descrip description box. So you will be able to find it there for sure. And it will be the first thing on the list and it's completely free. And again, what am I thinking? There is no copyright, no information. I really just wanted to give you this as a blank form without anything extra, just in case you do something different with it, because there's a million zillion things that you can do with an egg temp template. You don't have to make this quilt. You can make any, you can make a lot of different things. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to use this in your own way. Okay. And I will tell you the egg there's no square either, one inch square. Please print this where it says actual size, not fit to page, not any of that. Um, actual size. When you do that, this the largest size across should be four and three quarter and the tallest should be five and three quarter, okay? So roughly. I mean, it's really, really close. It's not perfect, but it's really, really close. So that is what these eggs should be. Um, if you print it different, it'll show up different. And I know that because that's what happened to me. I had to have my husband print these. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's available for you. A free template for the eggs. All the fabric requirements I just told you as far as the overall, but I will also say I'm going to do a supply list. Now it's a little different because I want you to use scraps. 
I want you to have fun with it. I want you to have a good time and really uh, feed your creative soul. But I am giving you a supply list. So I'll definitely tell you in the supply list, so you don't have to memorize it, that um, you will need, you know, the background yard uh, fabric yardage requirement, the binding, and uh, the background. I said that already. The background, the binding, and the backing. Woo! Say that 10 times fast. Okay, so all those things will be in there, but I'm going to do a little bit more and make sure that I tell you some of the subcuts uh, that you'll need to do with the printed fabric and as far as the pinwheels go, I'll put those in there and all the background fabric cuts, okay? So I'll be sure to do that, but let's figure out, let's not figure out, let's learn how to make this. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, I will tell you, I started with the half square triangles. <laughs> so I will see you guys up close and personal in just a sec. All right, guys, first things first, you know how much I love half square triangles. <laughs> so guess what we're doing? <laughs> a lot of them. So what you'll need for this particular wall hanging, you'll need 32 background fabrics and 32 printed fabrics of two and a half inch squares. Two of these together, one background, one print will give you two half square triangles. So 32, two and a half background, 32, two and a half inch square of printed. What I like to do is get my handy dandy um, disappearing ink. And y'all see me do this a million times. Now this is a two and a half inch square. So you just want to line up corner to corner. I use my quarter inch line on my ruler. Make sure it actually hits the point. And then I'm going to draw one side. I will flip this around. And draw the other side. Now, what's really nice about this method, you can actually look to see on the line that you drew if in fact you are straight, okay? So we're just gonna mark it up. Okay, at that point, you're gonna take your right side of your background and the right side of your print and put them right sides together. Now, when I sew, we're gonna cut this down straight down the middle, okay? So when I sew, I like to sew closest to the side that I'm gonna cut right next to the drawn line. It's better if you can get, if you can get right next to it, it's, it's the bomb.com, okay? But we're just gonna get right on this side and then on this side. Okay, because we're going to cut down this middle. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to be sure that your fabric and your thread, whatever takes up inside of the seam, when you go to flip this, you will have enough to cover for the appropriate measurement. Okay, just a little tip. I know I've been through it a million times. So here we actually have one that I have finished. So I have sewn as close as I could, right down the insides of those lines. I'm simply going to take my ruler, and you don't have to use a rotary cutter for this part. You can just take scissors and cut down the middle. It ain't no big deal. And then we're just going to, well, you want to make sure you cut all the way through, okay? Just cut right down the middle. So you have two different areas, or two different triangles. When I go to press this, I am pressing, I guess it's really, diff well, for me it is. I don't know how well you see. I'm going to press towards the print, okay, on every single one of them. There will be, thir or excuse me, there will be 64 half square triangles when you're done with this. So I'm going to press them all going towards the print, 
Okay. And I actually have one finished. I mean, it's not finished, but I mean, ready for this next part. So this is what it's going to look like. They're all going to be with these little dog ears and we've pressed towards the print. Now, when you, whatever side you're going to press on tip of the trade is to put it on top the side that you want the seam to go towards. So I want the printed side. I want it to go towards the printed side. So the print side's up and then I will press it open. Okay. And it will be towards the print. All right. So at this point, you're going to need to trim them. And these are going to be two inch unfinished half square triangles. Okay. So you take your diagonal and you line it up with the diagonal inside the quilt. And I happen to have that 45 degree angle on this ruler. And I like, believe it or not, I, I actually tried this with a two and a half inch uh, square ruler. I like to be able to hold on to it. So I like the six and a half for this purpose, just because I can hold on to it. Then, you know, we've got some leftover because we're trimming it down. We're squaring it up. And you want to make sure you're within that two inches going all the way around. We're going to cut one side and you want to make sure you go through. Ask me how I know. Now you don't need the rotating mat, but you can see how convenient this look. This is, it really is convenient. Okay. There we go. So that's one. So I'm just going to, so that's how it was sitting. Okay, so I'm going to turn it so that the dog ear that's left is facing towards me. I'll get my ruler lined up again. This time I'll be sure that I'm going to line up these edges along here, along that two inch. And my corner meets at the place where the two fabrics right along that diagonal. Again, we just want to make sure that we are lining up on the two, on the two on this side, and then down the center of the rectangle or diagonal. And I should be wearing some other glasses because I'm having a hard time seeing. Now, I will also say I might have to trim this one more time. I always say that and then I don't have to. Okay. Do we pull? Well, see, I didn't cut all the way through. You know, you should always check. Okay. I'm probably going to cause more problems for myself. There we go. Yep. Oh, I got a little, I got a little doohickey. He'll be fine. All right. So I'm going to put him back on here because I think I got to trim it down. I do. Okay. I just knew it wasn't right on the two inch mark. So that's how I knew. Just want to make sure I got through all this one this time. Yep, I did. Okay. So that is all the trimming. That's it. That's all we're wasting. Okay. So two and a half inch squares. Sew them together and um, cut down the middle. And then square them all up to two inch, un, uh, two inches. Okay, so you'll have sixty four with a background and a print. The next step is that we're going to take these and we're going to make them into pinwheels. Love me some pinwheels. I'm just grabbing some here. So, what's important? is well that's a that's a polka dot we want I, I've been doing them all the same okay and you probably want a different color so let's just grab some colors there you go that you all be able to see so I put I always, this is just me these are tiny coordinates so there's just stripes and polka dots on each of them so I've done two stripes and two polka dots for each what's important is that you make sure that your seam is going towards the center on each one of these and you turn it see my seams going right here's the seam going towards the center okay but I've got print background print background 
So now we need a print again, you'll want to line up that seam. And what's nice is these two will be opposite. So my prints on this side, the prints on the opposite side. So that's one way to tell. I've, I've done some picking. This is why I'm telling you. Okay, so and then the last one, again, you want the seam. You think, you know, you got to be careful because see down here to work, but it won't work up here and there's no seam here. Okay, so you want to make sure that seam is in and it's going in the correct direction. So what you will have is print, background, print, background, etc. Okay, in a circle. And that'll give you your lovely pinwheel. So at this point, I do go ahead and stitch a quarter inch seam going down this way. Okay. And these will nest. Your seams will nest. But if they, if for some crazy reason it doesn't, when you're doing two inch squares like this, you want to make sure that your fabric is lined up perfectly. Okay. You don't want to have, you know, one side off a little bit because then your points will line up funny. Ask me how I know. Okay. So we've got. You just go ahead and sew down a quarter inch. Do it again over here. Sew down a quarter inch. Now, if your machine tends to eat, what I like to do, and I'm just gonna, I'm not lined up right, but I just wanna show you guys. So this is where my seams are, all coming together up here. And if I send this through just like so, a lot of times, even with a leader ender, I don't have a single hole plate I have a wide hole plate, so sometimes it eats it, right? So what I do is I get it all lined up, knowing what side I'm, this is the important part, knowing what side I'm going to stitch, and then I just simply flip it right on over. I know this is the side I'm going to stitch. I reminded myself with a pin if you need to do that, and then I'll start up here and go down, okay? That way this is finishing down here with the seams, and it doesn't eat it up here. It worked great absolutely wonderful okay so you're going to do that with both now which way am I going to press well before I told y'all we press towards the print well see that ain't right oh I got them backwards see you got to pay attention because I'm telling you guys been there done that okay that still don't look right that's right this one ain't right okay whoop then that means this one's not right see there we go <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I think I need to get rid of that pin, right? It's bent. <laughs> so you got to pay attention to which way you're sewing and making sure that you have that, that print versus background in order, okay? But which way am I going to print? I mean print, press. So we press them all going to the print on the first round to make these two-inch squares, okay? When you sew the two-inch squares together, whatever you do, do it consistent okay so if you have four different and like i have polka dots and and stripes right so what i did is i pressed them all going towards the polka dots made it easy to remember and it worked okay that way this seam's gonna nest but if you don't have something like this that has got a pattern and you just have four random uh pieces of scrap fabric that you're using just make sure maybe you press going to the right on the top and to the left on the bottom just opposite of each other okay just always make sure you press opposite and life will be easier for you so we're going to pretend like we went to the sewing machine and we have <clears throat> this is what we're going to have so notice i did say i press towards the polka dot see i press towards the polka dot and then I press towards the polka dot, okay? All you're simply going to have to do at that point is nest your seams. And I will tell you, if you want to check, you can do one of two things. You can pull back your fabric here, okay? And you can see if your points are going to line up. Or you can do the polka pin, not my favorite, but you can. That's that bent one again, guys. I keep grabbing that one. 
So whenever you do the polka pin, you want to come in at the point. And this is why I don't like it. It's a lot of work. Now this isn't perfect, but, and then you want to go down into the second point. And whenever you're lining up, what you want to make sure is that in fact, your um, seams will nest and there's no gap and they're not overlapping, but they're just nicely butted up next to each other. And that your pin is straight up and down. Okay, it's going through straight. It's not like um, too far left or up and down, especially like if it's like this. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. That, that's not right. You don't want it the other way. It want, You want to make sure that it stays straight, straight up and down. Okay, and then you can simply take and pin your left side and your right side, your two ends, and then stitch your quarter inch at that point okay taking out that center pin if you really wanted to check okay but these are actually lined up pretty good so I'll just sew a quarter inch and you will have yourself I when I say that I always want to say and you'll have yourself a merry little Christmas anyway uh, so you'll have yourself your this is a three and a half inch unfinished square okay so that's what this is going to equal when you go to measure it all out make sure you're squared up your points shouldn't be nice and pretty and I will be real honest with you guys at first I was going to spin all my seams and then I decided the last seam I'm I'm pressing open because there's nothing that they're going to be nesting with so it didn't matter so that's what I'm doing, okay? So I'm pressing these open and it'll allow it to lay much flatter, all right? So those, you'll end up making, so we started off with 32 background and 32 printed two and a half inch squares each, okay? That made us 64 two inch half square triangles, okay? We put four of those to all together. So what you are going to end up with is 16, three and a half inch unfinished squares. Okay. All that gives you 16 of these. All right. So that's the first step. Now let's have a little fun. I actually, this was a lot of fun, but this next one is allowing you to have your own creative soul, do whatever it is that makes you really happy. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, now the fun part. My little egg won't, this little side won't stay down, <laughs> but we are going to be making eggs um, just using some simple string piecing basically is what this is. And we are going to applique this on. So we've got half square triangles and applique. Imagine that, right? So what will we need and what have I done? And I'll talk a little bit uh, about this on the live about how I cut these um, striped fabrics, but using the tiny coordinates uh, from True Colors, from uh, our favorite Tula Pink, uh, I've just basically out of each, and there's plenty left over guys, so you don't even need this much, but out of each of the fat quarters, I actually cut a two inch strip. Okay, that's actually a two inch strip. I've cut a one inch strip and a one and a half from each of them. Okay, so that way it gave me something, a lot of variety to work with. It made it easier to do that. So I just went ahead and just cut a bunch of strips. Now the bonus behind this, whatever I don't use, it's going in my scrap bin and they're already cut to sizes. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. All right, and I will tell you, it was nice to have the variance. So this is actually a two and a half inch strip. This is a, I'm sorry, a two inch strip. 
This is a uh, one and a half and these this right here is a one inch. So you can see it was really nice to be able to use the various different strips. You don't have to. I also want you to notice that I did this one horizontal, but you can also do them vertical, which is the one I'm going to do with you. I'm going to do a vertical with you and see these are one inch strips and this I would imagine is a one and a half. I don't know what what I did with these because they're just on the ends but it's nice to have that that you know variation in your strips now you don't have to do it this method there's a million zillion ways and there's no wrong way to do this but now that we've cut the strips and the various different sizes <clears throat> you will also need the template that I have provided, the light goes down because of the white paper. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but there are two eggs on each of these. Okay. And we're going to do it like string piecing. All right. Because, and so because of that, we're going to cut it down. And when you cut this first time, now I notice I did again, I gave you a solid line and there's a dotted line over here. And that dotted line is your quarter inch. Okay, make sure you print this to actual size with your printer. Um, I didn't always do that, so I had to have my husband print <laughs> because it changes the size a little bit if you don't. So actual size is what you want. And you don't have to do it, like I said, in this method. You could just sew strips together and then get it big enough to cover, or you could use your favorite applique method if you want that quarter inch seam. You can do that too, but we're going to go ahead and cut this out and I'm going to show you my, my favorite method because it just makes life easy in my opinion. So I will actually cut out along the quarter inch. Now it does not have to be perfect. Okay. And I am using paper scissors. I'll use fabric scissors later. But this does not have to be perfect whatsoever. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna end up cutting it again. But by doing it this way, it's going to allow us to have really pretty edges, and we're gonna know exactly how long our strips need to be. Okay, so there's our egg. We've got it cut along the quarter inch. Let me move all that out of the way here <clears throat> okay now when we go to do this the first thing I would do is flip it over <laughs> now what this is going to tell you is how long these strips need to be and like I said we're going to do ours so that the stripes go vertical but I want to tell you you could do them at an angle also okay you don't have to be vertical and horizontal. You don't have to do that, guys. This can be done completely any way you like, okay? So um, one of the things that I did do is I kind of had a plan. So I'm going to start with this in the middle, okay? And then I just kind of laid stuff out. So the next one... I'm going to have is this one and then over on the other side and these are one and a half the one I started with was a one I have an extra just in case and then I, I, I probably will need it that's why I plan for it then I'm going to go ahead with this stripe which is another one inch and then if I need it I'm going to go here and over here that's if I need it I have backups I know exactly how I'm going to position this but I'm just going to lay them back out just as so these are the way I'm going to take them so that goes on the bottom then this one then this one and we're going to start with this one <clears throat> now I don't know that I'm going to get it perfect. I'm okay with not being perfect. This is not that kind of a project. Okay. 
So I'm going to use glue. You don't have to. You can definitely use um, a pin. You can hold it if you want. You can do whatever you want. But I'm just going to put some glue down right onto the fabric. I have found that it works better if I put it on the fabric and not on the paper first. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm going over the edge. Okay. I'm just going to press and see, I can already tell you this side is smaller than this side and it's okay guys. It doesn't matter. So then I'm going to take some scissors and I'm just going to cut beyond the edge. Okay. So it's always going over. So that's the first piece. And then we said we we're going to use this piece next to it. And so what I'll do is I'll go right sides together and I'm going to actually sew it that way. So I want those two sides to go together and I want to make sure that I'm going over the edge and I'm just going to take my scissors and making sure I'm past the edge and snip them. It doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't have to be accurate. This is the fun part guys. Okay, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch this together. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back at you when I do, I'm going to go ahead and press this first. And I'll talk about that when I come back at you and I'll line up the next piece and you'll get to see, because the first piece you put right side facing up, right? Second piece is right side facing down where we can stitch this line right on the paper. Okay. Does it have to be perfect quarter inch? No, it does not. Just try to be straight. That's it. Okay. That's the name of the game. And then what I'll do, we're going to build this together, but I'm going to speed up the video. So you won't hear me, but you'll be able to see after we get through a couple of these, I'll just speed it up so you don't have to sit and watch me do an entire egg, which doesn't take very long, but that way we can have a little more fun. So I'm going to take you to the sewing machine. So I'll see you in just a sec. So we're at the sewing machine here. I do have my thread ready loaded. It doesn't really matter what foot I'm using. It doesn't matter if I'm exactly a quarter inch. You just want to be straight. That's it. And so I'm going to go ahead and lower my presser foot. Now I'm lowering the presser foot and I know it's hard for you to see this, but the presser foot is actually when the needle drops, it's, it's on the two pieces of fabric, but it's off of the paper. Okay. Only reason is because we're going to cut it down. So I just wanted a good start. That's it. There's no, you don't have to do that. It's just my method. And I'm not even sewing a quarter inch. So there we go. I just want to make sure that we're straight. And mine's a little skinnier than a quarter inch. And then all we're going to do is cut threads. I'm going to go ahead and press this. Okay. Oh, I did forget to tell you one thing. When you stitch with pa on paper, you want to make sure that you are stitching with a lower stitch count. Mine's set at 1.8. Anything lower for me, and my paper separates very, very quickly. Anything larger, it's harder to get the paper out. So I'm using a 1.8. You want to lower your stitches. And you can practice with each different egg if you like. Start with 1.8. Maybe 1.6 works for you. Some people even go less than that. But like I said, I find that it separates my paper before I'm ready for it to separate. So I don't do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and take this to the pressing board and I'm just going to press it open and I'll see you back at the cutting station in just a bit. Okay, here we are back and I have pressed it. Now you can press right on top of the paper. It doesn't hurt a darn thing. And all I did was just press this seam open. Okay. Or that direction. All right, away. Now we're going to go ahead. Now, if you'll notice, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this and we'll go ahead and stitch it because there's not much left. If we flip this over, I will tell you that my fabric is along here. So I'm only going to need one more piece over here. And I did say I would use the orange. Okay. And the orange is a little bigger, but that's okay. We're just going to cut it down and we'll know for sure that it's going to cover all the paper that way. 
Well, when we get to the other side, I might come back. You'll watch me speed up, but I might come back at you towards the end and we can talk in case I need to. But again, you'll just make sure that your right sides are together. Okay. You're going past the paper. And then we want to make sure we're just going past the paper on the other side and we're just going to cut. Okay. And again, we will stitch a quarter inch ish. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be anything great and wonderful. Just so you're stitching down in a straight line as possible. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and now again, once this is stitched, I'll just press her open. And then I'll start the other side, but I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video from here on out. If I need to come back at you, I will uh, for some reason, but we'll, you can just watch this be finished. It won't take long. See you in a sec. Okay, decided to chit chat with you a second. Um, this space obviously is not big enough and I could have put a bigger strip. I could have done all the way up to a two inch strip from that green and Jen, Jen, it would have filled the whole space. But I really wanted this blue stripe in here because it has, I know this sounds really silly, but this stripe actually matches this green, okay? so. I just kind of wanted to do that. I wanted to leave it in. And so this will be definitely enough and there'll be some left over. Just like on this side, we have plenty overage, okay? It is how it works, but it makes it easy because we know exactly how much we need. So this is the last piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that stitched on and I'll see you guys in just a sec. This kind of looks like a hot mess, right? There ain't no egg here, is there? <laughs> yeah, it does look kind of kind of funny. So the first thing at this point, we have got all, all of the area is completely covered and we can see our line of our egg, okay? So we are going to go ahead and cut out along this quarter, in, quarter inch, okay? or around not the we cut this is the quarter inch space but we're going to cut right along that black inner line at this point now like i said there's a million zillion ways to get this done <clears throat> and i am using fabric scissors at this time i did find that it works a lot better just know that paper does dull fabric scissors faster okay and you're just going to cut right along this black line And you want to make sure that the fabric and you could you, if you wanted you could glue this little piece down if you um, wanted to pin it whatever it takes i just simply keep cutting And there we have it. Oh, she's cute. I just love this fabric, guys. Oh, I just love this fabric. I'm so glad I have more of it. <laughs> okay, so here's our egg at this point, but we still got paper on it. Now I would leave the paper on. You're gonna make nine of these, okay? So I would leave it on until right before you're ready to go ahead and applique because because of the way we cut and stitched there is some biasy and this paper allows it to hold together very nicely where you can store it but 
I've already done my other eight. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you how easy. Now remember, I'm doing a 1.0. Oh, you can't hardly see me turn it down a light a second. That's better. So I use a pair of tweezers, guys. <laughs> Nothing special. Now on the ends, when I'm starting to rip, I hold down that, that end, okay? And then the paper just simply comes right off. Now for these insides, I might fold on that seam a little bit just to get it started. Try not to grab, there are seams in here, so try not to grab the seam when you're going to pull the paper. Make sure you're only pulling the paper. And there we have it. Now you'll notice I have a little piece that hung on there. I didn't rip it right. We'll come back to that, but you're just going to go through making sure that you're not grabbing any seams, that you're only grabbing the paper. Oh, this is the one that in the middle it was glued, remember? Temporary glue. I used uh, Sue Daly's Sew Line Glue pen. Works great. It is temporary. It will wash off. Okay. There's that seam. If I need to get up underneath, I can use my tweezers. That's not my favorite when that happens, but you know, at least you're seeing real time here. <clears throat> Okay, I was going to cut that, but I don't need to. Now, we've got this extra. Well, that one just pulled right off. But if something wasn't going to cooperate, I just take some tweezers, and it just comes right out. Simple. Nothing hard. We've got two more little strips here. Probably need to adjust the light again. Nope, it wasn't a good idea to adjust the light. Just so you know, I tried. Okay, so we've got some remnants here. Throw that away. Don't have much. Now, when it's on the corners, it always makes me a little nervous. If for some reason, when you're doing this, and you accidentally pull on your seam too much, and it comes undone, you can very simply, here I'll show you in just a second what you can do. There we go. Boom, and last little bit, boom. If for some reason your seam came undone, all you gotta do is flip it, line up your needle, and just don't worry about the quarter inch because you may not have a quarter inch, remember? So you'll just wanna stitch right on the stitch, keeping it straight if you needed to do that. Here's another one, ask me how I know. So we have nine of these beauties. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to begin to applique them. So I'm going to get everything ready and we'll, I'll show you how I got that done. And if you want to at this point, you can put this underneath on your pressing board and go ahead and give it another hit. Um, some of these skinnier pieces they have a hard time laying down, but that's okay. It's not going to make any difference for your applique because um, they, they will lay down flat in on the quilt, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and grab everything, and we're going to get to the next part. I'll see you in just a sec. For this next part, we're going to start to applique all nine of our eggs. Yay. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same one that I made with you. But I will let you know, you will need a six and a half inch square of fabric. I'm using that tone on tone. I think you can see that. Now, you can also see a shadow in the back. And that's because I've actually put on Pellon's Fuse and Tear. So um, it's fusible on one side and it adds stability so I don't get puckers or anything like that. And it makes my stitches really nice and pretty. That's completely up to you. I just find it really helpful. So to make this easier for myself, what I actually like to do is take my ruler. Now this is a six and a half inch block. So half of six and a half is three and a quarter. 
So I line up on the three and a quarter on the edge and I take my disappearing ink pen and I just do a little hash mark and I turn the block and do it again going the other direction and all that's doing is giving me a reference and because it's disappearing it will in fact go away okay so I have the four marks and like I said it's just to give me a reference okay of where that center might be because then I'm just listen guys y'all aren't going to believe this but I'm just going to eyeball what I think a center is now I've done a number of these and well this is number nine <laughs> so I've done eight okay and so what I like to do is put that in what I think is the center and then I take my ruler and I put it right on top now the three and a quarter line is so interesting to me because what ends up happening is on one side it's on the inside of it and on the other side it's on the out out oh no it's on the same one this time well it didn't always happen that way <laughs> but then I simply count my hash marks so I'm going to go in from the left and right first one two three four five six seven eight nine and a little one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a little. So we're we're roughly centered. I could move it slightly to the right, put it back down. If you know, I wanted to get even more perfect. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like that much better. Now I usually mess up the up and down and I will tell you I wasn't thinking straight on some of my other ones when I was counting the hash marks so some of them aren't exactly center it, it won't matter it's okay so one two three four hash marks okay so basically an inch one two three four five six hash marks so I need to pull it down and that's exactly what happened for the most of them I don't know my eyeballs just don't see things like that so I'm just going to pull her down. All right. Put it back on. And oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Really? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's correct. So we're going to pull it down again. Okay. This is real time, guys, and for some reason that doesn't look straight. There we go. We'll have to count the sides again. All right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, that is exactly even. And you see how this line doesn't, I don't know if you can tell. It's hard to tell, but I have a white line that goes through here. It's not completely straight, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me do that again. That's four. No, yes, yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Yeah, I somehow moved it just a little, which makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. And this is just, it makes it easier to for me to find the center and now my line's looking more straight one two three four five six seven eight nine with a little and that's one two three four five six seven eight nine a little so guess what guys that is centered and it's pretty straight maybe off a little but it looks good to me yep oh I'm, i kind of want to turn it just a smidge <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to use, you can do this 80,000 different ways, right? Depends on your applique method. I'm going to go ahead and use Roxanne glue baste it. And it has the nozzle, um, the skinny nozzle, because I don't want a lot of glue. So I'm going to start at the top. Okay, and I'm just going to fold it over. And that way you can kind of see, I don't, you don't need lots. I'm going to start over here maybe there we go Whew. 
it sat overnight, so I'm not sure if I needed to clean out the nozzle. Sometimes you have to. I should probably do a video. If you're interested on how I clean out my nozzles, because if you let it sit for a while, it will, in fact, um, it, it tends to get a little clogged at times. All right, so I'm putting it underneath this, and then I actually glue here. We don't, you don't need a lot. And I'm actually gonna glue up here. All right. And we just push that down. So I'm gonna turn it. We're gonna do the same thing on the edge here on the bottom. Put a little down there. Yeah, I, I tend to make a mess, guys. All right. <clears throat> Last but not least, we've got this last side, and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to come back a little bit. Now, if if you get it on, this the thing I like about this particular uh, glue, besides the fact that it's pH of neutral and it's temporary, so meaning it will wash out, it won't hurt your fabric, and if you get your egg on here and you find that something just ain't right, hold on. The reason I glue in between here is to help hold these edges down. Okay. There we go. And I will heat set this uh, a little bit. Okay, but the beautiful thing is, if you think think that your egg is still not right, it will pull up. Let's see if I can do a little bit. See, it is very temporary and repositional. So, if you think you need to move something, you can. Okay, that's one of the beautiful things about this Roxanne's glue based it. Super love it. Okay, so now she is applied, and I'm going to take you in. I'm actually doing a double blanket stitch for my applique. Because this is raw edge, I would encourage something like a zigzag or a single blanket stitch or a satin stitch, but something to help close off these ends. So I did a double, and I noticed uh, throughout the YouTube world, there are some questions about doing blanket stitches. Now mine's a double so it does a little extra moves and you'll see that I won't stitch the whole thing because then you'll have to sit there and watch the whole thing but I will definitely give you some tips that I have found and um, show you a little bit about getting this stitch down so let's go ahead and go over to the sewing machine I'll see you in just a sec here we are from the get-go and I just have a couple of things to let you know about because these eggs are various different colors I wanted to pick something that would it, that would go with all of them and I went ahead and chose I know it's really hard to see right it's monofilament thread by Orphil okay and it's it's the clear one not the smoke or smoky not remembering which way they call it that one's a little darker which might work for most of these blocks because I have some darker more saturated colors but then it'll really show on the really light ones. so I went ahead and just did the clear I also want to tell you like I said before I'm doing the double blanket stitch okay you can do a single you can do whatever you want um, I do have my stitch length and width set at 2.0. Now, every machine does something different, so I would highly encourage you to play with different sizes um, before you put your egg ready to applique and figure out what it is that you like for your stitch and length. But I'm doing a 2.0 for both stitch and length. So, monofilament. Oh, as far as monofilament goes, if you choose to use it, do not wind a bobbin. You will cry, pee your pants a little, and then cry some more. It is not meant to be done like that. You can buy, apparently, some pre-wound bobbins if you so desire to use monofilament like that for both sides. But what I do is I have 2600 Dove Orafil thread, 50 weight, loaded in my bobbin. 
and then I have the monofilament coming through the top uh, top thread okay so the first thing I'm gonna do I just want to let y'all know cuz you won't be happy if you'll notice my needle is not straight down the middle it's to the right okay and that's good I hope it stays but I'm gonna take my hand wheel and I'm gonna lower it exactly where I want it to go I'm gonna lower my presser foot to make sure the tension is is engaged and then I'm gonna hold on to this thread and I'm gonna hit the needle down which it went all the way and then the needle up oh good we're still on the right <laughs> And then I'm gonna take my monofilament and I'm gonna pull on it a little. Now, you're probably asking, Angel, why are you pulling up the bobbin thread? I'm doing that because I don't want it to nest on the back. And that's one way to prevent it. And then I can see much better where I start and stop this way too. So I'm just gonna grab my bobbin thread with a pair of tweezers. Ooh and it won't come undone. Got to figure out which way it's going to go. There we go. We're going to pull it out. There we are. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave that presser foot up because I'm going to take that hand wheel again. Because my presser foot's up, my feed dogs aren't going to grab onto the fabric and move the block. I want to go back in exactly where I came out and then I'll lower my presser foot. And then I'm going to get started. Okay, so this double blanket stitch, it's going to go like, I don't know where it is in the stitch. I'm guessing we're going to go down and then we're going to go back and then we're going to go down, in, out, down, up, down, in, out. Okay, so this is a curve. So we're going to talk about a little bit of stuff. Oh, it went back first and then it goes in and then it'll go down. And then it'll go in, down, up, down, in. Okay, now what I want you to notice, let me grab something to point here. And I don't have to hold these anymore. You will see that this line right here of my, of my egg that's meeting the background fabric is relatively down the middle-ish, okay? It's straight, let's just say that. When it starts to get where I need to position the block, let me show you what I do. And I actually hold on back here and you'll see that as I keep going, but we're gonna go. Okay, now I know the next stitch goes in and I want to move this just a little. So before it goes in, I don't always do that because I, sometimes my machine makes an extra stitch and I'm stuck and then uh, sometimes I, I space. <laughs> But the idea is to keep consistent. So notice I pivoted before it went in. Sometimes you'll see me pivot when it comes back out, but whatever you do, you wanna make sure that you pivot your fabric when it's on the outside of your applique, okay? Because if you don't, if you pivot while it's in, then you'll get like a, like a zigzag instead of a straight, instead of it going over top of itself, okay? So let me keep going here. Okay, now it's gonna go back and then it's gonna go one. Now, again, I'm at the point where it's gonna go in and I think I wanna go ahead and pivot a little to make this area more straight, okay? Now I wanna also mention that I am not pushing or pulling the fabric, I'm just resting to keep it, help keep it nice and flat. But I'm, don't, you let the machine guide the block, okay? So we're gonna go another one, I think. And obviously I'm gonna do one more. Well, now I'm gonna, oh, see I'm getting close and I've already come back in, or I mean back out and I'm not straight, I'm gonna go ahead and pivot. Again, I like to do it before it goes in, but that's okay. All 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and keep on stitching. I'll probably cut somewhere and then you'll see me at the end, okay? But I like to rest my hand back here and what I'm doing, my latch for my presser foot is right here. I know you can't see it, but it's right here. So if I need to, I just grab onto it and lift because the fabric is being steered by the feed dogs in the machine. So here we go. Okay, I am coming up to where I, I mean, it is right here. So the next stitch probably. So I'll show you what I do. Just wanna see where it's gonna, whoop, now I've, there we go. Okay, here we go. Whoop, might help if I was in the right place. Oh, it, nope, we're gonna go over one. Now I'm overlapping. So I go in, I go out. Now it's going to go back one, I think. Nope, it's going to go forward one, <laughs> back one, and then I will go ahead, lift my presser foot, come out to Nova Scotia, and go ahead and cut threads. That way I have extra long tails and I can figure out exactly what I'm going to do when I bury them. I'm going to pull them to the back and tie knots because you don't see the back. So we are completely finished. I'm gonna just do a real quick pulling off so you can see how easy it is to pull off this fuse and tear on the back. And then we're going to the design board and we'll go to the next step. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, here she is. Now I still gotta bury these threads, but I wanted to show you how easy this fuse and tear tears, okay? So once you have everything stitched, just pull, right, pull it right up and it just tears right off. And you do the same thing. I would, if you want, and you wanna get every nick and cranny out of it, you can use tweezers. But for the center, oh, I did it, guys. I am I scorched with my thread snippers. Okay, just getting it started. Make sure you do not cut your fabric. <laughs> and all you're trying to do is get a nice, hold of it and see it just comes right out and like I said for anything that's left behind you do the same thing that we did earlier with the paper and you can just simply pull them out so I just wanted to show you how easy this was to tear okay it comes right out and it gave the stability that we needed for um, getting our block without any puckers. So she's super cute, right? Super cute, love it. Okay guys, we're going to the design board. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this going. I'll see you in just a sec. So here we are getting it all laid out. Now there's a couple of things I wanna mention. First thing, if it looks crooked, it's not you, it's the quilt, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, so a couple things I wanna mention. Um, remember how I told you to pay attention to which way your pinwheels were going? Yeah, so I figured out as I was sewing along that I kind of messed that up. So we have some of them that are color on the top here and some of them on the bottom. Isn't that big of a deal? <laughs> They're all spinny. Uh, so what I ended up doing was there are 16 of them, right? So I did eight 
one direction and eight the other direction and I just split them all up, okay? And um, I just alternated them best I could. And I also alternated between the horizontal and the vertical on the um, eggs. And I'm just noticing, you know, when you take a picture, it's always good to take a picture. I think and I might switch some around again. <laughs> I haven't decided. I'm looking at it and it looks, it looks a little, I, I got to balance that out a little bit, I think. Okay. Now here we are. You lay it out. You lay out with these strips. You'll need 24 of them. They're three and a half by six and a half. Okay. The three and a half is because our cornerstones are three and a half. And it's six and a half because our eggs are six and a half inch blocks. Okay. So three and a half by six and a half inch strips of your background, 24 of them. And you'll lay it out around, you'll put one on each side of the egg and then you'll fill in the pinwheels and all the other spots. Okay, makes it very easy. Now, y'all know I don't like long seams. This is not gonna finish, but at, oh, what I say, 30 inch finished. So I'm going to suck it up buttercup because I think it'll make it really easy for you to understand. And I'm going to throw a picture up here in a second, but we're going to talk about this. So the first thing, this block right here, this top left one, I had to do the L thing. <laughs> You're going to sew the strips onto the eggs and two pinwheels onto a strip. Okay. That will be block one. Okay. And when you do that, let's just say, press away from the color. That makes it easy. So we're going to press away from the pinwheel and away from the egg. And by doing that, these seams will nest. Okay. And these seams will nest. So press away from the color. Now, if it bothers you to have shadows, you're still going to have them if you were to press opposite with the egg, you're still going to see a shadow in there. If you use a white background, it ain't going to make no big deal in, in my opinion. But if it does bother you, you can press the opposite direction. But there's some seams in here and there's no seams here. So if you're pressing away from the color, you're going to allow yourself the opportunity to have a nice flat seam. And when you go to put the rows together, you're going to be able to see the X's that are formed and make sure you get those points on your, on your, uh, pinwheels. Okay. All right. So we're pressing the whole time, press away from the color. So this block, okay. So that was block one. Okay. Then all you have to do is add this here, this here, this here and this here, and that'll be your first row. So <clears throat> then whenever you come down, you'll need to, this will be your first row and this will be your first row along with this bottom. Okay. Then all the rest of them, uh, quarter inch seam to here, quarter inch seam, quarter inch seam, quarter inch seam, quarter inch seam, press away from the color. So this bottom block will be covered this top block, except for one side, it'll be three sides, right? Nope. It'll be, Oh, this one will be all four sides. Okay. You'll have like one big block here. This will just be three and this will just be three. Then you'll have two, two and three, two, two and three. So I'll put that picture up. Okay. Now you probably won't see me cause I don't want you to get confused by the quilt behind me. You want to make sure that we are paying attention, you know, to the actual, the pressing method here. I mean the, the sewing method, press away from the color. <laughs> Once you have all that done, then we're going to come back and we're going to add this block to this one, this one to this one, and that'll be row one. Okay. Do the same thing with the bottom rows and those will be row two and row three. 
and then it's about stitching them all together. And as long as you press opposite directions away from the color, everything is going to nest beautifully. Now these are 30, 30 and a half inch seams. So pin, pin, and pin some more, okay? I will pin in between to make sure each point nests and doesn't shift, okay? I can throw a picture up here too, if I remember to take one. <laughs> that way you can see exactly how I did this, and then it's just about sewing those rows. So I'm, I gave you a picture with each individual row, and then we're just gonna sew them all together into one big 30 and a half inch square, okay? So yes, let me go get that done and I will see you guys up close and personal. See you in just a sec. Surprise! <laughs> Back again! <laughs> okay, as I was putting this whole thing together, I wanted just to come back at you because you can't just keep pressing away from the color if you do it like this because things won't nest. Now, if it doesn't bother you that things don't nest, you're good to go. You do you. But it bothers me. I like to press to one side and I like to butt and nest my seams. So understanding that, all of these are, I put together just like I said. So the first block is surrounded by three, by three, and the last one is all four, okay? On the second row, surrounded by two, surrounded by two, last row I have three sides, okay? Now I left this last row not completely done because I think it really demonstrates what I was talking about. So I did go ahead and put this first block together and it's got two sides, okay? But all of this, I went and I stitched the pinwheels to the rectangle, the rectangle to the egg, the pinwheel to the rectangle, the rectangle to the egg, and they're all separate. And yes, I did press away from the color, okay? Away from the color. So when I go to put this block, because it's got to look like this one, okay? So I'm going to attach this block to that one. It's got to look like this on the bottom. So we're going to attach this one and this one, and then it'll look, they'll look all the same. Well, blocks. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but if you're wondering, how did I press these seams when I added them? Well, let's just make this easy, guys. This seam, when you're attaching the pinwheels to the eggs, on the first row, all going up. The second row, all going down. Whoop, last row, all going up. Okay, so we've got up, down, up. That's easy. So when we go to put these things together, everything's gonna nest. When I attach the second block to the first block of the row, so second block to the first, second to the first, second to the first, right? Correct? <laughs> I'm gonna press these two seams right here to the left. <laughs> I have to do the L thing again. These two seams right here to the right. These two seams right here to the left. So we're gonna go left, right, left. That was up, oh, that's not up. Up, down, up, left, right, left. Boom, then you'll have your 30 and a half by 30 and a half inch square while hanging, okay? I will take a picture when I add row one to row two, all the little pins. I'm not gonna pin here, you can. This is only a six inch gap, okay? So I'm okay with that, but if you wanna pin in the middle, go for it. But where I'm really focusing on is everywhere that these seams will meet, okay? Because I want those seams where they meet to not shift and to give me a pretty um, junction, 
right? So I'll make sure to take a picture of that and I'll share with you when I come back at you with a finished wall hanging of the egg hunt. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, she is all stitched together. Oh, yes, absolutely love. This was a lot of fun. I hope that you give this a try. There's a lot of things that you can do with that egg tem template though. Um, and we'll talk about that during a live. I do have some ideas and I think you'll enjoy them. Uh, you don't even have to do it in strip piecing, just so you know. You can do one solid piece of fabric. You can pick your favorite fabric and just slap the whole thing on, right? <laughs> so, there's so many things that you can do with this. And it turned out so super cute. Now we just got to quilt it, right? Yeah. So we'll talk about that too. But... That is the egg hunt, and I did promise you a picture, so I am going to throw up the picture here. I don't know where it'll be, <laughs> but I'll throw it up here, and you can see that I've pinned every single seam, and that's how I can get my points when those intersections come together, okay? The seams nest, that makes it easy to nest them together or put them right next to each other. Make sure there's no gap. Make sure they're not overlapping. And I got to tell you, I did have to pay attention because there's a lot of white fabric in here. So I, I did do that and um, made it a lot easier. I will tell you, I do have one error, one really big one. Now, we don't like to talk about errors. So I... I, I move out of the way, and that's a little hint, <laughs> and I decided to leave it because it isn't going to make that big of a difference in, in anybody's world but mine, and I'm going to be okay with it, but we'll talk about that too, and that's what brings me to the live, so I want to say, guys, that after these videos, if there is a project that you're really enjoying or that you really want to make... I do encourage you to watch the live because there's a lot of stuff that goes on with the idea of doing the live. When I edit this video or any video of any quilt top or any project, as I'm going through, I realize when I'm editing, there's something I might have left out or something I feel like could be more clear or even fabric requirements Maybe I want to touch on that to give you a little um, background so you don't have to buy as much or make sure you're covered um, in any kind of way. They actually add to the value of this uh, project that you're watching. And even if you're not making the live, they're always there for the hashtag replay, okay? And so you can just sit and just watch the replay and get the knowledge that there's other things that we do talk about. So sometimes I show new fabrics or new notions. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that go into the lives besides the project. So once you have the project part and that's all you're looking for, I encourage you to watch the lives at some point that go with the projects that you're interested in. Not every project that I make, everybody is going to want to do. I get that. I'm with you. I understand that 100%. But if you see a project and you're really wanting to make it, please watch the live that goes along with it, okay? Um, because I add things in there to try to make it even, you know, better at some in some form or fashion, okay? So, saying that, we will be on today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time because I'm here in Virginia. And I say we because it'll be Mayhem and I. We're both going to be here today at 3 p.m. So, I hope to see you there. And until next time, guys, I hope that you have a happy Easter. I know it's not Easter yet, but we're talking about Easter. And this is my egg hunt. This way, this way, I don't know. <laughs> 
Um, but this is the egg hunt. So I wish you all a happy Easter. I wish you all the rest of March. And yeah, until next time, may you continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy quilting. Happy Wednesday. Whoop, whoop. And I'll see you all soon.